the EDO. Mr. Acker, you speak up. Why are the fears and prejudices of the community of such a difficult, a difficult issue like this is just contemptible? It was the most extraordinary contribution I have seen from the was, was it? This is an amendment to legislation. This is an amendment to things affecting the criminal justice system. This is something that, 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 that affects the entire community and it is a change in the law. And he stands in this chamber with no idea about the legislation and no idea about the law, simply bleeding about the fears and to the fears and prejudices of the community. And one of the things that I have found contemptible since I have been elected for only the short time of this House is I, is I hear not just, not just backbenchers, but I hear members of the executive government contributing to debate that have not only don't have any substance, it's not a matter of there being a different philosophical position, but they actually do not even know what they're talking about. And, I, and, and when you're dealing with matters of some seriousness, when you engage upon a tax on the judicial arm of government, when you say people should be going to jail that aren't, you must have some knowledge about the issues, not just listening or, or reading the, the local or the tabloid media. Now, just for the benefit of members of the House who think they have some knowledge about failures of the sentencing regime, do you know the Chief Justice was here today on the sentencing symposium? Did the member go? Did you go and learn something? If you would have gone there and listened, you might have heard this from the Chief Justice. You might have heard this from him. What are the, what are the purposes of sentencing under the Crime Sentencing and Procedure Act 1999? Do you have any idea? Well, you obviously you haven't got any idea from your contribution, so let me tell you. I guess to ensure the offender is adequately punished for the offence. To prevent crime by deterring offenders and other persons from committing similar offences. To protect the community from the offender. To denounce the conduct of the offender. To recognise the harm done to victims of crime in the community. That is five of the subsections from Section 3A. So don't stand in this House and say that the law does not provide for those particular issues when it does and demonstrate your ignorance. And come in here to participate in debate or go and clock and scream like a banshee outside. Now, one of the things I also find contemptible is that the other place is a House of Review. Its function, its function is to oversight legislation and to make sure it works. Its function is also to restrict the excesses of this House or the government of the day. Now, it shouldn't come to the other place to try and improve a particular piece of legislation to make it work. Because you would have thought that the executive government, the Cabinet, would have done that. You would have thought the Attorney General, who, whose views are well known because he's published opinion pieces, would have provided some advice to the executive government and provided some advice to the Cabinet before the Premier walked into this House and gave an example that was just erroneous at a question of law, while the chief law, the state's chief law officer is actually sitting here. Now the Premier gave an example in question time yesterday. He gave an example today which was just plain wrong. Now what emanated out of the Premier's mouth in was grievous bodily harm. There's no point saying it was only reckless wounding. And if he would have asked the Attorney General, he would have told him that. How does a Premier of a state who alleges that he is going to bring to this state laws to protect the community, have no idea what emanates from his mouth when he's sitting there with a chief uh, law officer who's, who just doesn't have a title but was a former deputy director of public prosecutions, who knows better. The reality of the situation is this, that your legislation is wrong, cobbled together on the back of an envelope, as the opposition leader said, and doesn't work. And it is so obvious that it's a shambles when you first recalled Parliament and sitting there in the briefing, you didn't even have enough copies of the bill, and I saw the failings over the shoulder of the Honourable David Shoebridge in the briefing that caused the Attorney-General to, to, to amend your own particular bill. Now, the reality is that your response is a political response. If it was a genuine response, you would have consulted the Sentencing Council, you would have consulted all the stakeholders to make it right. Every time this House intrudes in, the, in, in, in an amends legislation, it has unintended consequences. That's why there's a House of Review. To provide for mandatory sentencing for reckless wounding. You know what a wounding is? It's a cut skin. If you get a paper cut on your finger in circumstances that, that cause a person to act recklessly and being intoxicated, it carries a mandatory sentence. 
So if you're going to engage in this exercise, in this exercise of fiddling with the criminal justice system, it is a complex system and you have to get it right. Now, I know that there are members of the Cabinet who have, who have views about proceeding down this course that are similar to the views published by the Attorney-General in November. I know there are members on the other side of the House. Um, some have been published by speeches they've made, like the members, members for Cronulla. Uh, others, um, others have views whom I won't, uh, to, uh, to I won't disclose. But it is almost overwhelming. Uh, it is over, uh, almost overwhelming in relation to members of this House in relation to legislation of this nature. Things like this are far too important to play politics. I mean, the opposition spent, spent all of last year, all of last year, the opposition leader, the member for Toon Gaddy, um, spent their time walking up and down the, uh, King's Cross, talking to police, emergency workers, seeing for themselves ways in which to try and address the problems with alcohol fuel violence. It has been a continuing problem. The problem gets worse. It escalates over from year, year to year. And the Labor Party proposed a rational response in November last year to address alcohol fuel violence. The opposition leader talked about it today. And he dealt with some of the issues relating to what was occurring, the observations they made, talking to experts. Now that was the, that was the, appropriate, the, the appropriate response and, from, from, and there was no response from the government at all until earlier this year when the Premier simply announced simply announced when he came back from leave a whole range of, act, a whole range of, of reforms, including mandatory sentencing. And on the first day of the recall of Parliament, he just couldn't get it right. He just couldn't get it right. I saw it in 30 seconds, let alone you've got Criminal Law Review Division's Attorney General Department. <laughs> uh, uh, um, and I saw it within 30 seconds, and this I disagreed like, uh, with what you could... Exactly. So when the opposition leader says it's done on the back of an envelope, He's not making it up. It is done on the back of an envelope, and it is embarrassing in relation to your approach. But one of the things that I find the most contemptible, and I'm sure members of the House and I'm sure members of the Executive Governor are in the same boat, is the way in which the judiciary in this state is diminished or blamed. That is something that I find contemptible. And I find it contemptible because it is actually the function of the first law officer of this state to stand up in this House and defend the reputation of the judicial arm of government. It is so important for the community to have confidence in the judicial arm, to have confidence in the judges and have confidence in the criminal justice system. And, and, and you know what, it's not, it's not easy to be the leader of the government and it's not easy to be the Attorney General because every government of the day is always attacked, particularly by the popular press, for the decisions made by the judiciary. But there is but there is a way in which decisions that are made by the judiciary that may be wrong can be dealt with. Now, I hear the Attorney General stand up again and talk about the, talk about the tragedy to, to Tom Kelly in relation to, the, in relation to the Loveridge case. Now, in relation to the sentence imposed by His Honour Justice Campbell in, Lo, in, in Loveridge, that matter was uh, subject to an appeal to the Court of Criminal Appeal, and it was pending. And it is still pending and hasn't been determined. So if the government or the Attorney General disagrees with the decision of the courts, there is, a right to, uh, there is a right of appeal. Just as the Attorney General did last year, just as a judgment was given by the Court of Criminal Appeal in respect of a child sex no, matter yesterday. And so consequently, there are ways in which, there are ways in which perceived manifest inadequacy of sentences can be, can be dealt with. But it is, it is not every case, and that is the same contemptible expression. And it's not my function, even though I'm a member of the bar, to stand up in this House and defend the reputation of the judiciary. There has been a time over hundreds of years it was a function of the Attorney General. And it really is contemptible to see an Attorney General not stand up in this more House and discharge the, the job of the first law it officer of, 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 of this state. The and the fact of the matter is this. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, is, is this. That despite whatever our concern was in respect of what you intended to do, we utilised um, the experience of the Victorian Sentencing Council to at least get your legislation right and in, in, a, in a workable solution to prevent injustice. And one of the things that I find just contemptible in respect of, of, of the government's approach is what the opposition leader said. These are serious, difficult issues and they, and, and they, should, not be, they should not be reduced 
simply political attacks across the chamber. Thank you. Question.